So we were looking at uh, various CSS interview questions and answers. So next one is what is contextual selector? Contextual selector. Uh, actually, it is a string of individual selectors separated by white space, where only last element in the pattern will be addressed. So this is a contextual selector. What are pseudo classes? Pseudo classes. These are the classes that will allow you to identify HTML elements on characteristics. Means uh, these are specified using a colon to separate the element name and the pseudo class. For example, we have a pseudo cl class like this. That means you have an element, then you have a colon, then C link. This is a link. And then you say font color colon red. And this uh, pseudo class, which doesn't exist, but may sometime or may if you hover mouse, if you click, because you're not clicking, if you're actually clicking, then pseudo class will come into picture, like visited, link visited. So that uh, link will become this A reference link will become first red. And then if you have visited, it will become green. And then when you hover over it, means take mouse cursor over it, then the color will become yellow. What are some ways you might target IE or IE6 only without affecting other browsers? This is the way and for others also, you know, this is the, um, actually you can say a code, how you can write that if not, if this is actually, if not, if IE6, then link REL will be style sheet type text and CSS. Reference will be to IE6 CSS. So for IE6, the reference will be IE6 dot CSS and then end it. So it is basically, it's a kind of if relationship. If something is true, end if. So if this is true, then this will, uh, the cascading style sheet will be only used IE6 that will target to IE6, otherwise not. What does Z index do? Z index do? It uh, this uh, this is actually for the stack order of an element. So it specifies the stack order of an element. So an element with greater stack order always is always in the front of the element with the lower stack order. For example, if this is uh, say a division and you have an image here and a background picture. Background BC, let me write BC. Background picture, and this is an image. So, which one is going to be on the upper side, or which one will be on the back side? So, this Z index, in, index will tell that okay, this will be on the on the front side, and that will that will be on the back uh, back side. What is media query? Uh, actually, this is added in CSS3. So, a media query consists of a media type, and uh, at least one expression that will limit that limits the style sheet scope by using the media feature like uh, width, the height and the color like this. So this is link Arial style sheet media as I just suggested max width 800 px and this is the reference. So at the rate of this media max width is uh, when is 600 px then the facet bar the display will be the, the display will be none. So this media query is consisting of a media type as you just saw and at least one expression it, it may have more expression at least one expression that limits the style sheet score by using the media features as we have just uh, as we just did for the width what is id selector id selector is uh, say if you have, have a html element and then you say that id of this element is this so ID selector is individually is or is an individually identified name selector to which a specific style is declared. And using this ID attribute, the declared style can then be associated with one or only one HTML element per document as just to differentiate it from the other elements. So they or in CSS we use this have hash character followed by the name. What is contextual selector? We have just seen this contextual selector. Uh, this again, let us know that it, it addresses a specific occurrence of an element. So it is a string of individual selectors separated by white space. And now we'll give an example also a search pattern. 
where only the last element in the pattern is addressed, providing it matches the specific context. For example, TD means table data and should be list and then color will be assigned to red. What does this uh, backslash ABCD and backslash ABCDE mean? See, the CSS allow Unicode character to be entered by number. For instance, if a class value in say some Russian document contains some letter, Cyrillic uh, letter like E, L and P that is corresponding to the Unicode 041B and 041F and you want to write a style rule for that class so you can put that letter into style sheet by writing how 041B, 041F and then font style italic. So this would work on all keyboards so you don't need this Cyrillic uh, keyboard like this to write class names in Russian or other language that uses that script. What is property? What is property? Uh, property is a stylistic parameter or you can say an attribute that can be influenced through your CSS for example font or width. So there must always be a corresponding value or value set for each property. So what is the CSS clear property? The clear property will specify which side of element where other floating elements are not allowed. This is CSS clear property. So this method cannot control styles for multiple document at once. What are the necessities of using HTML forms? First of all, you need to gather information from user. You need to say conduct surveys and you want some interactive services for that. You want forms and you know once you have a form, you just submit it, sending a button and that will be uh, that data will be posted or it can be given to the server at once. What are the sequence of steps for each HTTP request from a client to the server? First, you need to make the connection, then making a request and then the response and following uh, followed by the closing of the connection. What are the advantages and disadvantages of various time methods? So we have already taken this question because if this question is so, so much asked. Uh, I will advise you to go through it again. So external style sheet, the advantage is that you can control styles for multiple documents at once and the classes can be created for use on multiple HTML uh, element types in many documents. The selectors and grouping methods can be used to apply styles under some complex context or situations. But the disadvantage of external style sheet, an extra download is required to improve, import the style information for each document. And the rendering of the document may be delayed until the external style sheet is loaded. Then embedded style sheet. So embedded style sheet, these are these classes can be created for use on multiple type tags. This embedded will be inside your head. And selector and uh, grouping methods can be used to apply styles under a simple context. No additional downloads are necessary to receive style information. What about inline style? advantages. These are useful for small quantities of style definition if you have just small definitions and this can override all this embedded and also the external. So this is going to override other style information method at the local level. So only exceptions need to be listed in conjunction with other style methods. So what are the disadvantages of inline style? It does not distance style information from content. So everything is inside. And then it, it cannot control styles for multiple documents at once. An author cannot create or control classes of elements to control multiple element types within the own document. And also the selector grouping methods cannot be used to create complex elements in distinct scenarios. What is CSS3? Now CSS3 is the latest standard of CSS and this is completely backward compatible with earlier versions of CSS. and CSS3 has been split into modules. So it contains the old CSS specification which has been split into smaller pieces and also new modules are added. There are certain uh, you know modules which are very important as far as this uh, CS CSS3 is concerned. You have selectors, box models, backgrounds and borders, image values and replaced uh, content, text effects, uh, then font types, different font types. 2D, 3D transformation, animation, multiple column layout, user interface, and many more. So most of the new CSS properties are implemented in modern browsers for you. What are the what is the difference or what is the difference or what are the difference between CSS and CSS3? 
See, CSS3 is just an advanced level of CSS 2.0. So in CSS3, we have new properties like the border, radius, border sh shadow, text shadow, multiple background images, gradient, animation, transition, transform, and much more. So CSS3 is divided into many different documents which are called as modules. Every module adds new capability and then this will extend features defined in the CSS2 or preserving the backward compat compatibility at the same time. So it work on CSS3 started around the time of publication of the original CSS2 recommendation by itself. And because of the modernization of CSS3, every, uh, every module has different stability and is in different status. The CSS3 support is supported by all new browsers mostly and this version support uh, some many more browsers than CSS2. CSS3 has other advantage uh, uh, features like new combinator, new CSS selectors, new pseudo elements, and new style properties. And what is the difference between this HTML CSS and HTML5 CSS3? See, HTML5 is uh, developed keeping in mind the usage of no, new modern browsers. So new tags have been added, added like header for heading, navigation, NAV for website, navigation blog, photo for the bottom lines in web page, and section article A site for particular sections such as blog. HTML4 supports what is called the tag suit. What means? The ability to write malform, no code and have it corrected into a valid document. So even if you forget some closing document, it will run. But the problem is that the rules for doing this aren't written anywhere. The developer just have to test malform documents in various browsers, especially you know, Internet Explorer to handle any errors. And also this HTML4 lacks rule for parsing, which make it uh, more difficult to handle errors. So HTML5 is, has, is attempting and already attempted to solve this so that the browser backwards or de browser developers can standardize and save the time. And the difference between CSS2 and CSS3 is, CSS3 is divided into many different modules as we just saw. And uh, every module adds new capability. Backward compatibility is also there. And as we just suggested, the same answer will repeat. And because of this CSS3, every module has stability and status. So we have various other like combinators, selectors, pseudo elements, and style properties added to your uh, CSS3. So this is all for CSS3, and hope you'll be benefited. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.